So, hello, this is uh, Yuri Skaja speaking to you from Riga again. It's been a little while since we last uh, talked about anything here. So, what's been happening in Latvia? I think uh, at the top of uh, everyone's news list or at the top of everyone's mind is uh, the stumbling and muddled vaccination campaign here. Now, people are getting vaccines. Some people are getting vaccines against the COVID-19 virus, uh, but nothing is going the way it really should be. Uh, there is now, and the latest move is now there is talk uh, of uh, actually using the Latvian military to distribute vaccines after a company that uh, the uh, uh, government or the Ministry of Health uh, had uh, hired to uh, do vaccine uh, distribution, uh, failed to do so, and uh, in fact left uh, maybe as many as several hundred people without their planned vaccine doses earlier this week. Um, so this kind of tossed the government into an even bigger panic mode as to what do we do now. Uh, and so the talk is now that the Latvian military could do this. Now, as it turns out, I talked to somebody in the, the Latvian Department of Defense. <clears throat> there is some experience for, uh, in the military for distributing things such as um, masks and personal protection equipment and um, uh, hand sanitizers and, and supplies of that sort to Latvian uh, towns and villages. They've been doing it, so they know how to do it. Uh, but they have not yet been given a mandate by the government. The government has not defined the mission for the military should it have to distribute vaccines all over the country in order to uh, kick off uh, the mass vaccination campaign that uh, the Minister of Health, Daniel Spavljuts, has been promising for us uh, uh, toward the uh, end of the second quarter of this year. Things look, uh, it's not exactly clear what will happen. Now, AstraZeneca uh, has uh, been also rather remiss in supplying promised vaccines to Latvia. And now it turns out that Iceland and Norway, uh, and I think even Denmark have uh, decided to hold off on this vaccine because of some possible uh, health and safety issues. Um, and uh, so we, ha we have that coming into the picture along with, uh, along with the difficulties that have existed up to now. Uh, the goal was to start vaccinating up to uh, 2,500 people a day. Uh, that was hit briefly, but uh, the vaccination rate has fallen since then. And the intent is, by the time we get around to the so-called mass vaccinations, it would be 100,000 people a week vaccinated. Well, it doesn't look like that is going to happen for two reasons. First of all, it's not clear. There have been promises made, but promises were made earlier as well for the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, that... Uh, as many as two million doses of the vaccine would be delivered, uh, or various vaccines would be delivered during uh, uh, <clears throat> the latter half of March and into April. Well, we'll see if that happens. The other thing is that there seems to be co total disorganization uh, as, how, as to how this is going to be uh, uh, distributed and gotten into the hands of the family doctors and the clinics and the hospitals that are supposed to do this. Uh, never mind the kind of mass vaccination centers that may have to be set up in their exhibition halls and, and sports arenas and not that kind of places where you can really literally vaccinate hundreds or if not thousands of people a day, uh, as well as getting the people who know what they're doing with the vaccine, uh, people with some kind of medical or nursing experience. Well, that all of that is sort of uh, not entirely clear as to what's going to be, how, how it's going to get done. Uh, the so-called Vaccination Bureau, uh, headed by a lady whose uh, CV contains uh, the fact that she organized the Latvian Song Festival some years back, uh, also doesn't seem to be playing the leadership role that one would expect the Vaccination Bureau to, to be doing in this case. It should be running the, the whole bloody show, but it's not, as far as I can say. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm slandering these poor people, but... 
But uh, the only thing that comes to mind is kind of the Latvian word for, for a kind of disorderly, chaotic mess, which is bardux, and that, that seems to describe both the process of ordering vaccines for Latvia that took place late last year, in which Latvia refused the uh, relatively effective but somewhat difficult to handle Pfizer vaccine and then sort of leaned toward the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is now sort of causing a lot of problems both in terms of delivery volumes and in terms of these uh, suspicions of possible side effects, which have not been proven, but which certainly will undermine uh, the faith in the vaccination process of an already uh, skeptical and uh, s misinformed, I would also say, public. All sorts of crackpot theories are floating around about, you know, vaccines are, are putting microchips in people's bodies and all that stuff. So that, that, that is certainly not aiding, aiding faith in the whole vaccination process uh, at all. So that's what's been going on. The government has also been repeatedly kicking the can down the road in terms of, you know, what kind of uh, uh, sort of quarantine or lockdown or semi-lockdown regime we are supposed to be under. Now, uh, the figures for infections have been kind of unchanged at a relatively high and, and, and already uncontrolled rate. Uh, they seem to be sort of slowly easing down. I, the the lat latest figures indicated that actually the percentage of infected people among those tested was less than where we have the threshold of 4%, where, where beyond that we are in, 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 in uncontrolled spread of disease territory. But uh, the government seems to have decided, at least in principle, on a kind of moderate... Uh, set of restrictions, which it would uh, uh, kind of basically uh, put all public servants on a work-at-home basis. Uh, everybody in municipalities, everybody in the Latvian government agencies should be working from home. And encouraging, or if not exactly ordering, the private sector to do the same. All except for manufacturing industries, uh, where people have to be hands-on, they have to be standing by the production line or running the machinery or whatever, uh, which creates certain problems for uh, uh, things like call centers or, or other, other places where, where, or, or uh, warehouses where people are just simply bringing in and distributing food and all of that kind of stuff. So, so it's not clear. Also, they want to cut capacity on all public transport, trains and and, and the trolleys and buses in Latvia's bigger cities to 30%. And the rules for how to do that have not been drawn up yet. It isn't clear how, how you know, we're going to, who, who's going to enforce that? Who's going to stand in the door of the bus and say, okay, we've got 30% full. All of you other people can stand on wait outside in the, the blizzard. That's another little side note here. The winter has come back here and it's going to be, cold and snowy for the next few days, the middle of March. This is the whole March coming in like a lion business. We're experiencing him, although the lion is, is <clears throat> arriving in the, in the middle of the month when it should actually be leaving. Uh, so we, we have that. We have this kind of, kind of systematized indecision in the government. They meet on a, on a Monday, the, the four coalition parties, as I put it, the four coalition parties and the dead horse at the government table, which is the who owns the, Lat who owns the state party, which has is, which is torn itself to shreds. They do have several ministers in the government. Those ministers seem to be reasonably competent people. Uh, but the party itself is a mess. So there are really only four political forces in, in, in charge in Latvia. And, and they meet on a Monday and they just sort of set the agenda for what they want the uh, government to make decisions about and what they want the uh, national parliament, the SIMA, to talk about. Um, then they meet on Tuesday together with some kind of crisis management group. And then they reinforce some decisions or make some new kind of potential decisions, but they're not final decisions. 
And then they throw that on to the Thursday meeting of the government at which official decisions are sort of signed and sealed, except that hasn't happened for the past couple of weeks or so. Things have gotten postponed and kicked down the road to the next week, which is the case even now about whether the government is going to uh, uh, set a kind of clearly defined what they say is a moderate restriction policy from now on until, I suppose, at the end of the the emergency on uh, April 6th, unless they decide to extend that. Uh, that may not be the, decided until until after the 15th of, um, of March. And uh, one more and more gets the impression that, that there is, that there is a struggle going on inside the Latvian government. Those who would rather open everything up or open as much as they, they want to open up and those who are hyper cautious and sort of listen to the most dire scenarios put forth by the epidemiologists and others saying that, you know, if you, if you open up too much, you will end up uh, uh, with a spike in, in cases, overloaded hospitals and all so, sorts of terrible problems, which we have seen in our neighboring Estonia, where, where movie theaters and restaurants and public gatherings with certain upper limits on the number of people who could be there uh, were open. I mean, the Estonians were sort of carrying on almost as if nothing was going on until bang, they are having more than a thousand or considerably upwards of a thousand new infections per day. Their hospitals are under strain. There's even talk that Latvia and Finland may have to open up uh, some of their uh, hospital resources to take in sick Estonians. So that, that place has gone uh, to use a colorful Latvian expression. That, that place is heading for the, to, to the devil's mother. Pivalna Martis, as Latvian would say, as Latvians would say. So, well, basically, that's where things stand. We are muddling along in uh, uh, as year one of the pandemic uh, marks its sort of year one anniversary these days. I guess on the twelfth of March, if not a little later. So, this is Yuris Kaja in Riga signing off.